Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. And in this video, I'll be talking about Luminar 4 and Sky Replacement again, uh, but I keep getting a lot of questions about it and I want to try to answer them. And the question I've been getting a whole lot is about uh, night sky replacement. Hey, can I add a night sky? And the truth is you can add any sky you want. However, um, it depends on what sky you're replacing. In other words, can Luminar recognize the sky that's being replaced in that base photo? And that depends, truthfully. And um, I'm just going to show you some examples because um, it basically what it depends on is how bright and recognizable is the horizon line and the sky itself in the photo that you're replacing. So if it's bright enough, uh, like a daytime shot, and you're trying to convert it to night, works great. If it's a sunset, you know, time of day or blue hour, it recognizes that sky, works great. If it's dark already and you're trying to replace a dark sky that's really dark with a Milky Way sky that you shot somewhere else or later that night or whatever, um, it struggles to recognize that. So I just thought I'd show you some examples and walk through and just kind of show it to you. So let me start with kind of the daytime stuff. This was an afternoon shot. You've seen probably all these photos before. I've got this Milky Way shot that I uh, took years ago on the Oregon coast. I'm just going to stick that in and it goes in pretty well, right? I need to clean up the horizon so I'll do some like sky local kind of stuff. Um, maybe a little bit of horizon position and you know I've basically created a nighttime looking shot from that daytime shot. Now I can come in here and change the exposure on the landscape and when it says landscape exposure that basically means foreground. So you know I took something that was not a, uh, a nighttime shot at all, cloudy afternoon shot, and made it kind of an evening Milky Way shot. But that may not be what you're talking about. So I'm gonna keep going and grab some more photos if I could hit the right button. There we go. Uh, let me see, Here, here's one. Now this was a, a late, um, well not late evening, this was an evening shot, long exposure in Amsterdam, um, and kind of you know blue hour-ish, right? The sky is obviously very blue. So I'm gonna go get that same sky image and drop it in and you know what it does a great job here totally looks like a nighttime shot to me now i'm no expert on the night sky it may not believe be believable to have that kind of milky way over amsterdam knowing that it was shot on the other side of the world those of you that are advanced astrophotographers might get into sort of that thing i, I don't really it's not really my thing but you can now reposition it you can do landscape exposure which again it's not a landscape in this uh photo it is uh, basically just the foreground but you know I think I have a believable blend where I took a blue hour shot and turned it into a nighttime shot a cityscape example and I think this one worked really well let me go grab a couple of others and show it off here's another cityscape this was actually early morning before dawn blue hour but again I can load custom sky image same sky I'm just going to repeat it because truthfully I don't shoot the Milky Way very much and don't have a lot, of, a lot of example photos, but there you go. You could come in once again, drop the exposure, and visually, now maybe not um, in theory, because this, guy, this was in uh, Montpellier, France, and again, that sky may not belong in France. I don't know these things, but some of you may know that. Um, but um, believable in terms of visually, does the scene light work together? I think that it does. So, you know, another example of where it works uh, let me see here. I'm just kind of going through uh, my library, and here, here's one. Um, here's I used this in a previous sky replacement video. So uh, it's a blue hour. This was a set of brackets, and I'm going to say load custom sky image one more time, and boom, it's going to drop it in, and there it is. And again, you might need to do some things like relight the scene, change the uh, location of the Milky Way a little bit, but I think you have a believable nighttime shot from a blue hour shot. Now, the interesting thing is I have the same photo taken um, a moment apart because this was a set of brackets. Let me see how this works. Sky selection. The reason I'm doing this is it's a darker sky, right? Come in, say, choose that one, and it drops it in. I think it does a great job. Now, may not be believable in terms of where it was shot. Uh, in this case, I might say landscape exposure. I might lighten that a little bit. And even you'll notice that even if you drag this landscape exposure pretty far to the right, it's not totally cranking up the brightness of that foreground. So again, I think you have a believable nighttime shot there, but 
Here's the thing, I think a lot of people are saying, I'm doing astrophotography, which is one exposure for the foreground and one exposure for the sky. Makes perfect sense to me. It's the same as exposure blending at sunset, like I did in this video, but you're dealing with really dark skies. So let me go find a couple of dark skies, and I know I've got them in here. Um, here's one. This one, it doesn't work on because it doesn't fully recognize the sky or the horizon line. Plus, I have this moon, and it doesn't uh, capture that. So I'm gonna say sky selection, custom sky, add the night sky, and you're gonna get kind of a weird looking uh, horizon there, but that you've just got a full circle all the way around that. Um, and there's not really a way to get rid of that, right? So I'm gonna say, um, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say horizon position, you, and let me try sky local again. That might overcome some, yeah. See, it's kind of bleeding through into the ocean. And it's not sure if that's sky or not. I'm just gonna push this further and further and try to, I'm trying to cover up the, I think that's the setting sun, which is way distant and that's the rising moon. And the interesting thing is this one would be believable because that uh, the base photo was on the Oregon coast the sky replacement was on the Oregon coast. Now it was five or six years apart and in different locations, but I think it's at least theoretically believable. Um, if I came around and played with these closed gaps, I mean, I've got the moon kind of coming through, but the moon doesn't really fit in that photo. So, you know, and I've got all this weird overlap here. So if I played with it for a long time, could I get it to work? Maybe, except, I got the moon here and I can't get rid of that. So edit mask, brush, if I come in and say erase, you would think that would work, but it's not. It's it's erasing what I've put on top. I can't erase that because that's in the base photo. So that's a situation where it's gonna struggle to do the right thing for you in the sky. So if you have a bright moon shining and you just wanna replace the sky on top of that, it's probably not gonna recognize that. Now here's a couple of other nighttime skies. This was in London around Covent Garden, and you'll notice sky selection is highlighted, so that means you can go get a sky, um, and open, choose the sky, and boom, there it is on top of it. I'm gonna drop the horizon position, and I think it did a great job there. I mean, I think that looks fairly believable in terms of the blend. Again, London versus an Oregon nighttime sky may not be believable in terms of position of stars and that sort of thing. I wanna show you this example, and I know I'm kinda of hurrying, um, and the answer is, as I said, it just depends. So I'm showing you a lot of different examples, so um, you're gonna to wanna to do the same when you got Luminar 4, and just check it out to see how it works. Here it is. Now, in this case, it bled on top of those buildings. I'm gonna change the horizon position a little bit. I'm gonna do landscape exposure, go a little darker. Um, and in this case, edit mask, come in with a brush, because it also bled into that building lower my uh, brush or, or decrease the size of it, and I'm gonna click erase. However, you'll notice that as I'm erasing that sky, I'm also erasing the landscape exposure, so you gotta be careful. You're gonna need to come back and be careful with how you blend these and probably do some more custom work, and I did a sloppy masking job. I'm not trying to show you how to mask it accurately. I'm pointing out where you're gonna have challenges with night sky replacement. Um, you know, but it did a great job in this one. This is a like a kind of blue hour in London and load custom sky once again, add that sky. And it goes in really well, like behind the clouds and stuff. I'm gonna take the position down. Um, I think it does a great job. I'm gonna say landscape exposure. I'm gonna drop that. And I think you have a believable blend. So um, I think that's it for what I wanted to show you. Yeah, I mean, the rest are, you know, not really good examples. Yeah, well, actually, you know what, I'll try this one. Here's a daytime iPhone shot. Use this in a previous video, get a custom sky, add that on top, and, you know, boom, it comes in. I got a little bit of not catching it there, so maybe Sky Local will help me with that, and it did. I'm gonna drop Horizon Position. I think that does a good job. You gotta fix that landscape, it's way too bright. I wanna go really darker. And I gotta think a believable blend, or believable-ish, I would need to zoom in. There's some patchiness between these trees, which can be an issue. That's where you're gonna need to mess with closed gaps. Uh, and I'm not sure which way to go. You just need to experiment. But I wanted to walk through some examples of night skies. I think when I say night sky, 
I don't really go shoot like some landscape and expose one for the foreground and then one for the Milky Way and put them together. I don't really do that. And as you saw in this previous photo of the night sky where I did do that, which is this one, it struggles to recognize the horizon and where it stops and starts. Now I've also, you know, I've got the moon shining brightly, so probably not a great example. Um, I've got one, let me find, here's one. Um, also in Oregon, I was just out shooting and I actually like that sky. I think I would just leave it, but let's say you wanna try to blend that. It says sky selection is highlighted. It's actually recognizing it, so let's go, let me back up. What I mean by that is if you ever open a photo and sky selection is not highlighted, that means it's not seeing a sky and it says, hey, there's no sky for me to replace. So when I say it's highlighted, that means it's recognizing a sky. But let's go see what sky it recognizes. And boom, here we go. See, it's not getting all of that. It's, it's for whatever reason, it's not recognizing that as sky. So you can try to like do sky local. Maybe that'll overcome some of that. Oh, it did. Okay, good. Maybe you can say close gaps. I'm just trying to see how well this is going to going to go maybe a little bit more sky local and eh, I didn't really do much but I'm going to uh, take horizon position down and you see when I did that it bled on top of the ocean so you got to be really careful so with the night sky if you're shooting one for the foreground and one for the Milky Way currently again we're in beta so I don't know how this is going to be at launch and I also don't know how they're thinking about this in terms of the future. They'll probably get a lot of feedback from people about night sky photography. My assumption, Skyloom did not tell me what I'm about to say, but my assumption was when they built the sky replacement filter, they're primarily looking at boring blah daytime or sunset or blue hour skies and wanting to replace that with something more dramatic. My guess is they were not thinking, hey, you can do composites with Milky Way, which is I think what most people are asking about. So kind of a longer video, but a lot of examples here. Uh, it works really well in some situations, depending on what you're replacing. If it's a bright enough sky that it can recognize, I think it works really well. If it's a dark sky, that's a night sky. Actually, I got one more, let me show you. Um, it's a nighttime sky, uh, street scene shot in London. Let me find it. Uh, sorry, I'm just dragging you through my library here of a bunch of sample photos I'm working with. Uh, let me find, here it is. Um, let me show you this. Um, AI sky replacement, it's not highlighted. It doesn't even recognize that dark sky, right? So that's a situation where you're not gonna be able to do it with that filter. But I've got one more, this one, here we go. This is a dark nighttime sky. And I'm sorry, I mostly have cityscapes. I don't have a lot of landscapes, but dark sky. But look, sky selection is highlighted. So I can go get my nighttime sky, stick it on there. And, you know, again, it bled over that, um, but I think if you do sky local, um, and I think you need to do landscape exposure, drop that, and then very much you need to come in with edit mask and say brush and do, 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 say erase. You can erase that sky from those areas, right? Now, you need to be careful because it's gonna impact the other things that I've already done, which is brighten things. So. You need to do this carefully and slowly and probably in a different order, but that's an example of where it did see a night sky and another case where it did not. So again, the, the long answer is it just depends. Um, so experiment with it, have fun. I think in this case, it did a pretty good job of picking up the sky, although it'll need some customization. On the previous one, which is a long exposure, it didn't recognize the sky at all. And in fact, the filter didn't even allow you to use it because it saw no sky. So hope that helps on the night sky questions. Lots of questions, I'm trying to answer them and um, I'll keep doing more videos. So thanks for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. Please do subscribe, like, share, and let me know your feedback. And I'll see you real soon, my friends. Hope you're having a great day. Take care and adios.